Hey everyone, this is Dave Pike, Motor City Mechanic. I'm back with another video. This one's going to be on 2011, 2012, and 2013 Jeep Grand Cherokees. I want to show you step by step how to remove the front grille, so check it out. Now this particular vehicle is actually a 2011 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Now I've shown you other videos on how to remove the front bumper cover. This particular year model, the grill does not come off with the bumper. The bumper cover comes off, then the grill comes off separate. So that's why I'm doing a video on this because this is different in the way that it's removed as far as certain steps. A lot of them are basically the same. Um, one thing we've got, we've got a molding that goes along the fender well opener. We've got to get that off. We've got some fasteners around the fender well edge as well and underneath. So we'll go step by step on how to get that thing off. Now this piece of trim that goes along the fender well liner, it snaps in different places along the perimeter on the fender. When it gets to the bumper cover, we've got not only snaps, but we've also got a couple of plastic rivets we've got to get out. Now on plastic rivets, you can usually drill through them or try to knock the centers out. These are not reusable. I'm just going to get a small drill bit. What I do is try to line up as close to the center as possible and start drilling. And go through the head of it so that it'll just snap right off. And there we go. For example, we got that one off that way. The bottom one we can probably grab and pull it loose. And if you can get it pulled enough through, you can come back with your side cutters and cut the heads off as well. But that's the main way to get those rivets off. And once we get those off, we'll try to get this liner, this, this piece of trim off the front of the bumper cover. That way we got a little more access to get into stuff. Now that we got the rivets out of the way, we can grab the trim piece itself. Now it's got three snap-in sections right here, little fingers that snap into the bumper cover. I'm gonna start pulling on until you get them loose. Now if they get to where they don't want to free up too much, you can kind of give a little back and forth motion to the release. Just take your time. Try not to give it no more pressure than you need to. The last thing you want to do is damage anything because once they break, you will be replacing this piece. There we go. Now, we're dealing with painted surfaces. Take care whenever working on stuff like this. And what I could do is I can get me some tape and I can put it on those fingers because when I start maneuvering this bumper cover around, these pieces are still here. They may have a tendency to want to scratch. So I'm going to get me some of that tape, I'm going to put it along the edge right here, so if it does make contact with the painted surface, it doesn't cause any problems. The other thing you can do, along the top edge where the fender meets the bumper, you can put a piece of tape there as well. So when you're trying to line things up, things ain't going to line up perfectly initially. You may be up and down, being that you're manhandling this thing as far as physically moving it around. That way you don't get any scratches there as well. So I'll put some tape along this edge and along these plastic fingers that stick out so that they can't rub up against the fender cover. Okay. Bumper cover. Let's get you some simple tape here. This is something that doesn't stay on very strong. It's able to be peeled off easily. It's typically something we got at our body shop. I'll put it along the edge here. That way I get a little bit of wiggle room so I don't cause any damage. Like I said, what I can do too is where this lip meets that bumper cover. And grab me a couple little small pieces. Wrap it around the fingers, just so they won't physically come in contact. And if they do, it'd just be the tape touching it. I ain't got to worry about scratching it. Last thing I want to do is turn this car back up to the customer and they see scratches where I've been working on it. So definitely take a little care, take some time, just prep everything a little bit and just be safe. So there we go. That way we've got everything protected a little bit. So now we'll move on to the other side as well. I'm gonna knock out the passenger side, which is just a duplicate of this. And then we got a few more fasteners we'll get to. Looking inside that fender wheel liner, you've got a 10 millimeter bolt right here. Right near the access for the bulb on the back of the headlamp assembly, 10 millimeter. Get the 10 millimeter off the driver's side, get the 10 millimeter off the passenger side. All right, so the 10's off. Now I can pull this. It's not really a plastic fender wheel liner. It's kind of a kind of an insulation type material. Now get back up in here. The portion that the 10 millimeter went through, the threaded portion, it's kind of raised up 
and what it does is the bumper cover actually sits over it so you have to actually pull in the bumper cover to take it off this little mounting boss I guess you could call it to clear that once you clear that then that's off of that so the fender well liner stuff we've got all those released along the lower bottom edge of this front bumper cover you've got a total of four reusable push pin fasteners uh, what you do is you basically are going to remove the center portion and once you pull up on the center portion it will then release and then you can pull both the center and the lower portion off now just get you a tool to get up in here i'm using this metal trim tool removal and these are the basic fasteners typical style once you press them in they expand almost like a reusable rivet like so we got four of these we got to get loose so i'm gonna move on to taking the other three off and then we'll work on getting into fender well lower section to get those fasteners off now on both the driver's side and passenger side you've got this little plastic mechanism right here that you need to twist to release and what that would do is take that lower fender well liner loose from the front bumper cover now it's a larger portion right here it sits up in here that work on releasing it and there you go that's what we've got right here it's a larger piece you're just going to put it in here it only turns 90 degrees to lock it in place so you'll turn it 90 degrees to back off and kind of wiggle it out and we got one on the passenger side like i said and not just the driver's side all right so now we're at the point of removing the front bumper assembly now this has fog lights so there will be a connector behind there to get to uh, what we do is we'll start getting it loose and we'll find out where that connector is it could be on the passenger side could be on the driver's side but all we got to do is grab that edge of that bumper cover Start pulling, and we'll start unsnapping along the way. Like I said on this one, the grill stays on the car. The newer body style, the grill comes off with the bumper cover. So we'll start working our way around. Now, the connector for this, checking further into it, each fog light has its own connector directly at the bulb. You just have to unplug the bulb on both the passenger and driver's side. Once you do that, the bumper cover is ready to come off. Now, this front bumper cover. It's held on with two 10 millimeters. You've got one here and one directly on the opposite side on the passenger side. Top edge just snaps down into the upper radiator support. Now when you release these upper panels by pulling up, the fasteners want to stay down in the radiator support. So once we get this all up, we'll have to remove them, reattach them to the top edge of this trim so when we snap them down, they'll have something to hold on to. So like I said, I'll go ahead and remove the two 10s on both sides. Now those are off, I can grab the top edge, now we can grab the grill and take it off. And that's how you remove and replace the front grill. Now like I was saying, when that upper portion of the grill was there, the trim piece that kind of held over, that snapped down, when you pull it up, sometimes the little catches right here want to stay in the radiator support. So what I do is I'll take them out. Now I'll reattach them to the grill so when I go back down they'll snap. So they have a tendency to want to stay in the radiator support. So definitely watch out for those. Try not to lose them. That way the trim isn't loose and doesn't vibrate and make a noise. So there you go. Now you know what you need to do to remove the front grill on that Jeep Grand Cherokee. This one wasn't part of the bumper cover. This one was separate. Bumper cover still has to come off though to access the fasteners to get that grill off. So step-by-step -step instructions right there for you so installation is just opposite of removal if you got any kind of comments or suggestions about today's video or anything Chrysler Dodge Jeep or Ram please feel free to email me at david at motorcitymechanic.com I try to get back to you in a timely manner also any kind of thumbs up on YouTube is greatly appreciated you can like me on Facebook you can follow me on Twitter and you can check me out on Instagram once again always thank you for watching these videos